And then God the Son. When I was a boy, in my bedroom there was a bad reproduction of a painting of Jesus that we picked up at a flea market. And he's looking very stern. I can see it now. And underneath it said, um, and the Lord looked upon Peter, and Peter remembered. Peter remembered that he had forsaken his Lord. That perhaps had a psychological effect on me, <laughs> and, and, and the results of which you've been suffering from now for three years.
perhaps it would have been better, but I did nothing. Sins of commission, I did that, and it was wrong. They pop up unannounced, and we try to push them down, because we have never confessed them. I don't mean come to Father Tony and make a special appointment. That's for if you just can't get something off your mind, and it is haunting. In the old days, before Episcopalians came to communion, they spent the week preparing. Can you imagine? They spent the week preparing, and part of the, their preparation was to make a list of the things that they were going to confess on Sunday at the communion service during the general confession. It's a good job we don't do that anymore. Would, some of us would write a book. The things we've said that we shouldn't have said. The times we've stood silence when we should have said something. Moments that we can do nothing about because they're in the past and yet they remain in the presence and they get us. Resentments. Resentment that somebody in our family got that useless piece of silver when Grandma died, and I wanted it. That seems trivial, but those sort of resentments can be the deepest. Resentments that we were left out. Resentment that somebody's got something that I haven't got, or lives in a better house than I've got, and who that devil does they think they are. Why? Charlie was talking about the parade of houses. I like that title. It makes me think of a lot of houses with legs walking down the road. <laughs> but houses with the most extraordinary things in them. And you, you wonder, why should these people have all that and I don't? That is not my particular sin. I think, who on earth would dust it? <laughs> Broken relationships. Those that we've broken and we're sorry about. Those that the other person broke. And we've always resented that it happened and dreamed of what it would have been like if things had been different. Jesus says, whose sins you do forgive, they are forgiven. Whose sins you do retain, they are retained. We start by applying that to ourselves. And pray God that he will not retain those sins that we wish to unburden ourselves of. But then our task is to do something about it with other people. To be able to say to somebody who we know, who we see becoming more and more embittered, you can see it in his or her face, hey, it's all right. Drop it. You're forgiven. You're loved. That is another way of saying you're forgiven. You're loved. You never love somebody you can't forgive. When you say you're loved, you're forgiven. You're loved. You're cared for. But we say, where can I get the power and authority to do this? 
Well, at some stage in your life, maybe as a baby, maybe as an adult, you came to a font of water. And there you were baptized. And in that baptism, you were given the gift of the Holy Spirit, just as the first disciples were given it on the day of Pentecost, in exactly the same measure. It's there for the using. But we neglect it. Poor Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit becomes rather like that ornament we were told was very valuable, but we're not sure where we put it anymore. And when we find it, it's grimy and dust covered. Through sheer neglect. So on this Whit Sunday, Pentecost Sunday, we should as a church and as individuals pray the Lord Jesus that the Holy Spirit may become real to us in our lives, to give us the courage to obey his command. Go, tell, whose sins you do forgive, they are forgiven, whose sins you do retain. They are retained. Amen.